First of all, thank you for coming and uh, attending this small, friendly session uh, at such a short notice. Uh, I'm not going to say much, except that we have with us today Dr. Daniel Bunnar. Uh, those of you who are in any shape or form associated with the charity sector, when you mentioned the very first charity, the Muslim charity in this country, uh, we all remember it as Islamic Relief. And if you remember another name that goes with it, is Dr. Hadil Bunna, a gentleman who established Islamic Relief. Uh, I know it says co-founder, but for us, he was the founder. Um, and we all know it's one of the largest, mashallah, uh, Muslim charity in the UK, and probably worldwide, I guess, if you, if you, if you analyze it. And he also established, amongst the many other uh, um, organizations, the Muslim Charity <coughs> Program that Muslim Han is associated with, and of course, the humanitarian Forum as well. I've had the privilege to travel with uh, Dr. Hanyan Bernard to Kenya and Somaliland, and I've spent some long journeys with him to Egypt and across uh, uncharted territories of Libya. And uh, I'll never forgive you, may he made me a lot of Egyptian peanuts. He said it was good for energy, and I don't have to make stops for the toilets. So a wonderful guy, a wonderful personality. He's got a huge passion and desire to help mankind. And I think that's probably the best thing I can say about him. He has that pain in him, that burning desire to help people around the world. We're lucky that he's visiting us today and we've kind of coerced him into saying a few words of wisdom. I don't know what he's going to talk about, by the way. It's very unpredictable. But can you hand me over to Dr. Hani al Sorry. Why don't we put the chair there? Yeah, that's okay. Uh, Alhamdulillah. I don't know what I'm going to talk about, but I'm going to talk about legacy. Legacy cannot be measured unless we live this life and to go to the other life. Legacy should be seen by people who are inheriting what you have done for them. Legacy is your heart beating on the table and taking its pulse pulse from the heat of the needy community wherever you go. Legacy is the message of all prophets of God and messengers of God who came and nobody recognized them and even they were humiliated by their own family, their own people, their own community. But when they left this world, they left legacy behind them. Legacy is in the heart of every and each one of you. You can make it if you can discover the secret code of your life or the password of your life. At every soul, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made a secret code. When I go and touch his heart, when I touch his heart like this, if I know the secret code or the password, he will be able to be reformed and become a different man. That's why the difference between us and the saints, the difference between us and the disciples of Jesus, peace be upon him, the difference between us and the companions of the Prophet is they discovered their secret code of their life and they found that they are in this life to build the life for the other life to come. In this life to build the life for their other life to come. Because they knew that they are living on this planet for years, 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, 80 years, 100 years, give you 200 years, 200 years, 500 years, 600 years, 700 years, bargain, 700 years. Prophet Noah was, was prophesying people for 950 years. But at the end of the day, one of the days of God equivalent to 1,000 years of what will come. In another verse of Quran is 50,000 years. So your life and my life cannot be counted as one day when we'll be with Allah Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why legacy is about your heart. Legacy is about our intention. Legacy is our, our trust in the community and trust in the Lord. When we talk about some organization like Muslim Hands, 27 years ago, it was not in existence. Islamic Reef, 35 years ago, was not in existence. But now, you look at you. 
German, African, Asian, British are joining the journey that has been taken by Muslim hands 27 years ago, or 25 years ago, or 26 years ago. Did we know that you're going to exist in this place after 25 years? Nobody knew. But this is the legacy in action. Legacy is the impact of your work on the community. You measure the impact. The impact in the way you change the community, in the way you build the community, in the way you create community. And this was the prophecy of the prophets of God. They came to build community. They came to save community. They came to build the humanity. Legacy, when we see humanity is not in my tribe, is not in my family, is not in my country, it's in humanity. Whether I'm African, or Asian, or European, or Egyptian, or English, or Welsh, or whatever you call it. Humanity is for everybody. And that's why we want each and every one of you to leave a legacy behind. When you work for humanity, humanity is only not UK, humanity is humanity. But the beautiful thing is you start from UK to build the humanity globally. And never stop building, never stop constructing, never stop guiding, never stop saving, never stop teaching, never stop educating, never stop ad uh, advocating for whom? For the vulnerable and the most needy people of God, inshallah, of the humanity. And that's why in one of the verses of the Quran, which called Surah Al-Ma'un, Allah in this verse, as there is a scale, you know, when you measure things or you weigh things on the scale, he said that the one in this verse, the one who does not treat orphan nicely or who treated orphan badly is exactly like the one who does not believe in the day of judgment, that he is a, an unbeliever. This, this is what you call advocacy, Sister Zara. You had, had look at Surah Naum. Second scale on, on this, the one who does not advocate for the needy is exactly like the one who does not believe in the Day of Judgment. That means that he is not a believer. So you can imagine, in this, in this verse of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala both advocacy for the needy, advocacy for the hungry on one side, and disbelief on another side. This is how you measure, Sister Zara, advocacy. On one side, you advocate for the young orphan, or if you don't, you are going to be considered as you are among the people who do not believe in the Day of Judgment. And this is legacy. When you stand for the orphan, when you stand for the widow, when you stand for the displaced people, the sick, no matter where they come from, their background, whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims, actually uh, from your tribe or not. Even legacy is respect. When discussing with Maulana, I'm just needing to, to conclude. When discussing with Maulana upstairs about, is what we're talking is, is about religion, it's a part of the religion. We're very proud to become Christian or Muslim or Jewish, whatever you call it. But how can I translate or transfer or transform the religion into action? Justice, equality, fairness, okay? accommodation, respect, honor of any human being. Any human being. Any human being. Once upon a time, somebody wanted to kill our Prophet. Quite a few people, not only one. You are one of them? <laughs> And you know, some of his companions, his friends, he got the man, no, you are the man. <laughs> he, he is, he's a killer, he, huh? he's a suspect. And they got him by the neck and tied him around one of the pillars of the mosque. When the Prophet came, he told his companions, what is this man doing here? They said, Prophet, he wanted to kill you. He said, okay, fine. He looked at the man, the man was in shock. And he told him, to, to his friends, please untie the rope. So they untied the rope in a, in, a, in a surprise. He's coming to kill you. To kill you. The killer is here. Is that the killer? Mm -hmm. Or the young? One of you, anyway. 
<laughs> he untied it. Then what he said to his companion, to his friends, did you give him water and food to eat and drink? He said, no. Why should we? He's coming to kill you. He said, give him water and give him food. And they gave him. After the man was in state of peace of mind and safety and tranquility, Prophet approached him, telling him, Now I am the Prophet. Will you be able to accept the Islam? He said, No. Categorically, no. Said, okay, no problem. Please send him away. Let him to go free. Prophet at that time was looking about the integrity. The dignity and the respect of a human being and did not force him or compel him to change his religion. And my statement is forcing the vulnerable people to change the religion or culture is an act against humanity. The man went and after a few hours he came back. He said, Prophet Muhammad said, What? He said, I would like to become a Muslim. He said, Why didn't you say this when you were here? He said, I did not want to be seen that I was forced to change my religion, and I was, but now I'm willingly want to do it. Why? Because you respected the man, you kept his integrity, you honored him. And this is where you, as a humanitarian worker, when we deal with those vulnerable people, to have to preserve their dignity, respect, and honor. Because they are like us. And I conclude by saying, all the money which comes to Muslim hands, it's not Muslim hands' money. It's those poor people's money. It's those poor people's money. We are employed by the poor people, by the orphans, the widow, the displaced, the raped women and girls, the victims of war, the destitute, the elderly, the sick, and every vulnerable individual in the community. When we look at it this way, we have to be very careful. When we spend the money of those people on them and on ourselves. I love you very much and they say Happy New Year, a bit late. Today the Egyptian Coptic are actually celebrating the birth of the Christmas in Egypt. Uh, last week or two weeks ago, the Catholic and the Anglican were celebrating uh, Christmas two weeks ago. And we are celebrating every day, every day, the love and of Jesus, peace be upon him, and the love of Lady Mary, peace be upon her, and uh, and all the prophets of God. Thank you very much, Molana, for actually letting me to come and be honored to talk to this uh, brilliant staff of you. And Jazakum Allah Khair and Happy New Year. Mashallah. Um, I did offer any questions. If you yes, please, any questions. Uh, my email, I said. My email? My email. <laughs> I said you're here and there will be a small talk and thank you for that. And I did say if there's any questions, people can ask. Hey, the forum you. is open. Mmm, can see your eyes. No, you, 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 you. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm available for any question. Can I ask whether you are still active in work? Are you tired? <laughs> Today he's here, tomorrow he's in Gambia, next day he's in Senegal, then next day he's in Mali. So no retirement. No, no. 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 If, you, if you become a humanitarian worker, it becomes like a, like a virus. <laughs> you can't get it out of it. It's like a politician. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> That's politician. That's all the time he's in the ground. All the time. You can see. Doctor, I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, the peanuts. Yes, the peanuts, mashallah. <laughs> I think most of us, uh, we work for organizations, charity, development sector, NGOs, call it what you like. I think sometimes we lose our vision. We sit behind computers and we are fundraisers, we are marketing people, we are programs people. I think we very easily lose sight of the purpose. And I think you touched upon perhaps some words of wisdom on how can we make sure we keep focus on why we're here. Could I add that we don't become a business lab, we become a charity. Yeah. Okay, the spirit. Yes. You talk about the spirit, yes. the value, the morality, the humanity in your heart. 
I think the once you have this, you go to the man or the woman or the girl or the widow who is providing us with our sustainable life. Visit the underprivileged people in these countries and see what Allah has given you and what He has tested them for. Mm. And this is actually, I was t telling you about the story of this old man, actually in, in, uh, in Shari, in Palushistan. I was visiting it in November this year, and I was finishing it. So it's a very, very difficult area. And, uh, I think the brothers will know about it better than myself. Shari, Shari. is very Shari. poor. Very very poor. Oh, the poorest the world. Poor yeah. Thailand. And uh, on the way out, after we finished the, 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 the trip, I met somebody who was making coffee and tea for people in the middle of the desert. And you know what? His dream was to meet me. I never saw him before. Because he heard my name once or twice from the people in the area, or actually were a part of one organization, Islamic Deep, as you mentioned before. And when he saw me, he said, no, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. He's not the man. I told him, I am the man. He wanted to see me. His dream was to see me before he died. And a man like this, to answer your question, a man like this is the man who is going to pray for you and your family, for your health, for your wealth, for your knowledge, for your success story. Not your father, not your mother, not your relative, not your boss. But your donor, a man like this, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will swiftly accept his prayer for you to keep you on the way. I was telling brother, uh, uh, I started on the day, Birmingham, Manchester, Manchester, Islamabad, Islamabad, Quetta, Quetta Shari, on the same day. I was not the same day, about 36 or 38 hours. At my age, which I'm younger than you. <laughs> and one day, one and a half days, it's because of the dua or the prayer of such a man. You don't know who is making prayer for you behind your back. And this is the accepted prayer by that such an individual who can let you to go to he heaven before anybody else. Go and be with those people. Go and show humility. And go and stand behind their cause. Go and be with them hand in hand. Not be arrogant. Because they are, they are the one who, through Allah, providing us with our sustainable life. <laughs> Education, <laughs> food, and others. Now, all this electricity and this building is coming from the barakah of such young individuals. Poor individuals. And the people love you. Love you, love you. If you become dry, if you become rusty, go and clean your heart in this area. Any more questions? Anybody else wishes to? Um, Alhamdulillah, you know, Dr. Hamid Banna is the history, particularly in the Muslim Turkey sector. He made the history. And people also will write the history about his life. Little life because he's the man who actually took step in the beginning, then other people also. Mm -hmm. I was telling you to upstairs, then Allah gave us the fit to start Muslim hands. I went to the Islamic Relief Office, it was in a Muslim boat, Muslim yeah. boat. and also the other INGOs, Oxfam, they got the literature to read them and to understand what's the charity work. Uh, they have the bigness, this thing. And uh, we also, it's still, even, you know, today I was a really hard day spent with me particularly. At home, we had a big fast. And my, I said so to my wife, you know, last night, to the morning with the prayer time, that the man is coming here. This is no problem, we can have a big fast in the office. But I want to become my home, that I get a blessing. Those people, they are blessed people. They do the give their, their services to to the human being and the needy people. They're the blessed people because remember them all their life in the history. The, obviously, obviously, they the diet 
but even they do not die <laughs> to this second. People, those people that die, that no one is remember them. Those people, they are, they are alive. People remember them because they are treated by services. The Dr. Hani is that kind of person. He people always remember him because he has a passion and love for the humanity. And uh, this very good thing he has. He does not make a difference. This is a Muslim, this is a Christian, this is Hinduism. He said this is all of the creation of God. And we need to love each other. Uh, Dr. Hani, you talk about the legacy. Uh, some of majority of them are very young people here, and I, some of us old, who sat in the government, uh, and the obstacle was you faced. Uh, I witnessed, and the word uh, my brothers and sisters I will use a legend. Yeah. Government said, no, you can't sit with us. You can't do this. You are, it's uh, what you call that. They call it the brotherhood. All those names. So your journey hasn't been easy. And all those obstacles, I witness uh, at least uh, from 90, yeah, 91 onward. And uh, I think your success, those obstacles has made you more of a legend. And we really respect you for the, we usually use the word legacy, but I use the word legendary. So Alhamdulillah, Allah has granted you, may Allah give you a reward here, but more of it after, and preserve you. And you are a guiding star for Shasa and other Muslim charities they all came. But I think the point I want to make that against opposition from within the Muslim community, within the powers of the world, Allah has made you successful. And I congratulate you for that standing. Exactly. Yes. Yes. No, no, no. It's still not yet. <laughs> Don't get this statement to anybody unless he or she died. Yes. After that, you can say that he is a legend because I could be hiding something bad. No, 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 no. Legendary philosophy of thinking after departure. I cannot defend myself. You cannot defend myself. You cannot defend yourself. It starts after we leave, as I said before. In this life, I can fool anybody. Because I'm a very good actor, this is a I'm a very good singer, I can dance as well. <laughs> <laughs> well it's a very important thing uh, that he said that uh, a human being is a human being. Anytime he can mistake. And that mistake can destroy all of his life work. There's a time that you, you get the protection of God. May Allah protect him. Yeah. Then, then you go up to the end of the same thing. Otherwise, anything coming the, on the way, you can go to, to leave the right place. And uh, the, our ulama, our scholars, uh, most of the time, they, they, they do dua in prayer that uh, our end here must be the good. اللهم <تصفيق> والله صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الكريم وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين. Thank you. I'm thinking I uh, don't even there is a respect for me this, in this way that I'm taking care of you to Birmingham back his home and uh, be sure I'm not coming back. You come back then I'll be your office. And uh, there is a 11 Pakistani police officer came from Pakistan for getting the training in, in Birmingham from the police, local police camp. We are giving them tonight dinner. I hope so. You mean in Birmingham? No. Oh, very good. Flour, <laughs> prata. <laughs> <laughs>